I think a lot of the problems that come up with technology aren't the technology itself so, as much as the fact that people adapt to the technology in maladaptive ways. I mean, one of my fears about AI is not what AI will do, but what people will do. I mean, take text messaging, right? It's like it's a pain in the ass to text people, at least for me. <laughs> and so what happens is the communication becomes very Spartan and devoid of meaning, right? It's just very telegraphic. And that's people adapting to the medium, right? I mean, look at you, you've got this uh, keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. That's like got these like dome-shaped things and you've adapted to that to yeah. communicate, right? That's not the technology adapting to you, that's you adapting to the technology. And I think with, you know, one of the things I learned when Google started to introduce autocomplete in emails, I started to use it. And about a third of the time I was like, this isn't what I want to say. A third of the time I'd be like, this is exactly what I wanted to say. And a third of the time I was saying, well, this is good enough. I'll just go with it. Right. And so <laughs> yeah. what happens is it's not that the technology necessarily is doing anything so bad as much as it's just going to constrain my language because I'm just doing what's being suggested to me. And so this is why I say, you know, kind of like my mantra for some of what I've learned about everything in memory is to diversify your training data, basically, because otherwise you're going to be, so like humans have this capability to be so much more creative than anything generative AI will put together, at least right now, who knows where this goes. But it can also go the opposite direction where people could become much, much less creative if they just become more and more like resistant to discomfort, you know, and resistant to exposing themselves to novelty, to cognitive dissonance and so forth. You know, I think there is a dance between natural human adaptation of technology and the people that, uh, that design the engineering of that technology. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to create like this keyboard things that on net are a positive mm, for yeah. uh, human behavior. So we adapt and all this kind of stuff, but when you look at the long arc of history across years and decades, has humanity been flourishing? Are, are humans creating more awesome stuff? Are humans happier? All that kind of stuff. And so there I think technology on net is, uh, has been, and I think, Maybe hope will always will always be on that a positive thing. Do you think people are happier now than they were fifty years ago or a hundred years ago? Yes, yes. I don't know about that. I think humans in general like to uh, reminisce about the past, like the times That's were better, true. and complain about the weather today or complain yeah. about whatever today because we yeah. there's a kind of complainy engine that just there's so much pleasure in saying. You know, life sucks for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's why I love punk rock. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, there's something in humans that loves complaining, even about trivial things, but uh, complaining about change, complaining about everything. But ultimately, I think on net, on every measure, uh, things are getting better. Life is getting better. Oh, life is getting better, but I don't know that necessarily that tracks people's happiness, right? I mean, well, I would argue that maybe, and who knows? I don't know this, but I wouldn't be surprised if people in hunter-gatherer societies are happier. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they're happier than people who have access to modern medicine and email <laughs> and mm -hmm. cell phones. Well, I don't think there's a question whether you take hunter-gatherer folks and put them into modern day and give them enough time to adapt, they would be much happier. The question is, in terms of every single problem they've had mm -hmm. is now solved. Uh -huh. There's now food, there's guarantee of survival and shelter and all this kind of stuff. So uh -huh. what you're asking is a deeper sort of biological question. Do we want to be a Werner Herzog and the movie, Happy People, Life in the <laughs> Taiga? Do we want to be busy 100% of our time hunting uh, gathering, surviving, worried about the next day, maybe th co that constant struggle ultimately creates a more fulfilling life. I don't know, but I do know this modern society allows us to, uh, when we're sick, to find medicine, to find cures, when we're hungry to get food, much more than we did even a hundred years ago. And 
there's many more activities that you could perform or creative, all these kinds of stuff that it, it enables the flourishing of humans at the individual level. Whether that leads to happiness, I mean, that's a very deep philosophical question. Maybe struggle, deep struggle is necessary for happiness. Or maybe cultural connection, you know, uh, maybe it's about like functioning in social groups that are meaningful and like having time. 